Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mike Looney. I'm the superintendent of the schools here in Fulton County. I want to thank all of you for being here today to make sure that we can share important information with our families that's timely and accurate. Today at 11 o'clock approximately, uh, the Fulton County Board of Education, I'm sorry, Department of Health, uh, gave us notification that one of our employees has tested positively for COVID-19, otherwise known as the coronavirus. This particular employee is a teacher for us, it serves in an itinerant teacher capacity and serves both Bear Creek Middle School and Woodland Middle School. The employee fell ill last Friday and was subsequently hospitalized. I'm not in a position to tell you what hospital or what condition he's in. I'll leave that to other officials. I can say with certainty that in this process, um, this particular employee had uh, a lot of contact with students that he or she serves and also with additional staff members. We will be working with the Department of Health over the course of the next hours and days to help them identify the names and contact information of all those individuals, whether they're students and or employees that the, uh, this person has had contact with for the purpose of follow-up. Uh, for today's purpose, um, I made the decision to dismiss school early at three of our schools, Bear Creek Middle School, Woodland Middle School, and Creekside High School. Obviously, the two first schools was because he worked directly at those schools and then at Creekside High School. Uh, for three reasons, I made the decision to close that, that school early. One is because of the proximity of the high school next to the middle school. We share a number of staff members across the two facilities. And then finally, quite frankly, we have a number of families that have students in both schools, and we wanted to make sure that we had ample opportunities to notify the families that may be impacted. Uh, in addition to today's uh, early dismissal, I have made the proactive decision to close all district schools for tomorrow for the purpose of us taking a, a pause to assess the potential additional risk that our school community might face, to allow for additional cleaning and disinfecting to take place in all of our additional schools, and then to give uh, our uh, Board of Health um, additional time to follow up with the families, determine if there are any additional risks or follow up that needs to happen with them. We will continue to post updates about the information that we have here at Fulton County Schools on our website, which is www.fultonschools.org. We will also communicate with our families as more information becomes available directly. A decision about the length of this particular closing for the district will be made tomorrow by 5 p.m. Meanwhile, I ask that FCS students, employees, and stakeholders follow the guidance that's given by local physicians, our state and local uh, health departments, and national health care providers. We will post additional information on our website, once again, at www.fultonschools.org. I want to thank all of you for coming today to help us share this important information. I also want to just thank our employees for coming to work and leaning in and being flexible to adapt to a changing environment here in Fulton County Schools. I'd be glad to answer a few questions. Yes, sir. Contact with others who already have confirmed cases of the virus. Did this teacher have any known contact with others who have had uh, confirmed cases of the virus in the state? Did they have any recent travel that may have exposed them? Do you know about how they? Uh, we were just informed of the uh, the incident today or uh, the positive uh, test results today. We have not had the opportunity to speak with this individual employee to determine any of that additional information. In terms of your Could communication you just name the schools, with if you the parents. Mind, just name those schools again. I know we got Creekside yes, and the, uh, the two elementary schools. Bear Creek Middle School. Middle Creek. Bear Creek Middle School. Bear, okay. Woodland Middle School and Creekside High School. Can you talk about your message to the parents of the children and students who had direct contact with this teacher? What steps are being taken in terms of uh, self-quarantine? What's happening with the folks that you know, uh, adults and students who had communication and direct contact with this teacher at those two schools in particular and then sort of the crossover that you mentioned at the high school level? Very fair question. We are providing the, the Board of Health, the Department of Health, 
with the names and contact information for the students that and employees that we believe might have had direct contact. We have reason to believe that there was direct contact. Obviously, it's a teacher. And so we're counting on them to do follow-ups with those families. We're not health care providers. And so uh, we understand that that's their expertise, and we know that they'll be leaning in with those families and giving them very specific information. With that being said, I will say that we encourage all of our families, students, and employees that if your health, stay home. If you're, if you're sick, stay home. And if you're not feeling well, call your local physician or the Department of Health to get additional guidance. Can you tell us which school? I didn't, I didn't reference a man or a woman. Okay, will you? Um, no, not today. I, I want to protect that person's privacy. Can you tell us at which school that teacher was teaching in? Which one of those three schools? Yes, once again, this particular teacher taught at two schools as an itinerant teacher. And so the person worked at Bear Creek Middle School and Woodland Middle School. There yes, sir. are, as I understand, approximately 95,000, 96,000 students in this district. Of those students, how many had direct contact? Estimation, how many students and teachers had direct contact? Well, I don't want to um, speculate, but I will say on average, a teacher teaches five to six courses a day with 20 to 25 students. And that's in line with this teacher's average as well? I haven't looked at this particular teacher's specific schedule, but I would say that's very common place in schools. Specifically, Dr. Looney, can you go into what exactly will be done to cleanse the schools, to sanitize the schools? Well, this information is fresh to us. We have a pandemic plan in place, which includes disinfecting and cleaning our schools thoroughly. We will be implementing that plan tomorrow morning. We will be providing updates to our parents and to the broader community as the hours and days pass, and we will be uh, giving specific information about what actions we're taking as it relates to cleaning. What was important to me today is to inform our community, our school community, and the broader community of this issue to figure out how we might move forward together. You yes, sir. You mentioned that tomorrow by 5 o'clock you'll be making a decision on how long the school is going to be closed for. What else is going into that decision? Why is it taking until tomorrow? Well, we have been in contact with obviously the state's attorney of the schools and the governor's office, and we recognize that everything we do doesn't happen in the vacuum. It has a tremendous impact on the broader community. So by tomorrow, we'll have a better understanding of the risk factors that are at play, what the school district can do to mitigate that risk, and how it impacts the broader community. Dr. Yes, ma'am, in the back, did you have a question? Yes, will students be required to uh, log on to complete assignments and things like that? It's a great question. Fulton County Schools does have a digital learning plan in place. That plan would not go into effect until three days of consecutive absences for any condition, whether it's a weather condition or a virus. Yes, sir. Two questions. One to follow up on, on her last question. Uh, it sounds like you guys have a virtual learning plan. If for some reason a student doesn't have access at home, is the school district already making preparations, uh, maybe a local library somewhere where a student would be able to complete that, uh, that work? That's the first question. The second one, uh, how is this going to impact extracurricular activities? So I'll start with the last question first. All extracurricular activities are canceled in all schools until tomorrow at 5 p.m. when we make another announcement. As it relates to the possibility of us implementing our digital learning plan, it includes hard copies for those students that do not have access to digital learning curriculum. Yes, sir. Dr. Looney, there are no doubt people that are watching you right now who think that you're over-exaggerating or perhaps uh, you know, going too far. What's your message to those people who think that this is an overreaction? Well, I would say the health and well-being of our students and faculty members is paramount, of paramount importance to our school district and to our board. And until we can understand the breadth uh, of this particular um, issue, I think caution is better than negligence. What precautions were taken prior to this, given that we've been hearing from public health officials, including those at the CDC, that it's not a matter of if or when this virus will spread? Right. Great question. We have reviewed and updated our pandemic plan. We have communicated with our families, our students, um, and our employees about the need to follow the CDC's guidance as it relates to hygiene, frequent hand washing, staying home if you have a fever. So we follow the recommendations from all the institutions uh, that give us input. It just so happens that it has landed at our doorstep step now and we're trying to make sure that we are well grounded in making decisions about how we Dr. move Lee, forward. Can you talk a little bit more about the decision to go from closing the three initially and then the decision to sort of expand that across 
the district? Was that from conversations with the Department of Public Health, with CDC? How did you decide to go from three to all? It's a great question. So the reality of it is that a school closing decision rests in the superintendent's office. Ultimately, I'm the one that has to make the decision. Um, I didn't ask for recommendations from anybody else. I used the information that we had available, and we had to, I had to make a judgment on the risk associated with continuing to have school. And I would rather close school to make sure that, one, we understand the level of risk that's out there, if there is any additional risk, and two, that we have the opportunity to reclaim schools in preparation for additional concerns. We have been getting contact from families over the course of the last several weeks asking that we close school. At that time, we didn't think it was appropriate. At this time, because we have now a, a faculty member uh, that has had a lot of contact with students and employees, not to mention community contact with friends and family that extend beyond schools, we felt it was prudent uh, to pause, to um, get additional information, and to clean. Dr. Lloyd? Yes, sir. Has there been any, any change in the student absence rate? We have been monitoring student absenteeism for the last two weeks. We have not seen an un un uptick in student absenteeism in Fulton County Schools. Doctor, is there any indication as to how this teacher might have contracted the disease? Do you have any information on that? I have no information on how this person might have contracted uh, the virus. you're cleaning all 106 schools. Everything is going to be cleaned, not just these three. Well, we don't have 106 schools, but yes, we're cleaning all campuses. Yes. This, this teacher, um, you said, felt ill or started to feel ill on Friday. Do you know the timeline of how quickly they reported themselves? Did they self-report? Uh, did they? Can you go into details about that? I can tell you that the teacher fell ill at work. Um, 911 was called. The, the, this particular teacher was transported from the school campus, and uh, I presume to a local hospital, but I can't confirm that. It was not showing symptoms on Thursday or Wednesday or Monday. I mean, Once again, I can only speak to what I know today. I have no information about how long he was. Um, having symptoms other than he fell or she well, fell these, sick on yeah, Friday. These are important details, and you guys called the press conference. You guys called us here. You would think that these details that are very important to teachers and other students and parents who are watching you right now, you would think that you would have those details before coming in front of a bunch. Well, I can tell you this. I, can, I, I think it's important to share the details that I have. If I don't have details, I'm not going to share them. I'm sharing that we have a, a, an employee uh, that um, we have confirmed through the Department of Public Health that this person has tested positive for this virus, and I think that's very important information. But you don't know how many students, you don't know how many teachers, you don't know how long they were sick for, you don't know a lot. That's true. Well, we, that's one of the reasons we're closing school tomorrow to find out more information. What's Dr. Ann, if more classes get the proactive flu, you don't call 911. Was, was there something that stood out here? Um, yes, there was enough concern about uh, this particular teacher's um, status um, that they thought 911 was an, was an appropriate call. What does that mean? I mean, I recognize you're trying to. Um, that mean that you were concerned about the teacher's status? What? Well, quite honestly, we felt, or the, the folks at the school felt, the teacher was having some other type of emergency that required immediate assistance. And you said transported from, was that transported from Bear Creek? Did yes. they call 911 from Berkeley? Okay. Uh, Dr. No question. You've been in education a long time. Um, have you ever handled a situation like this before? And also, just, I mean, what, what's going through your mind right now? I mean, you got one of the largest school districts in, in, in Georgia, and uh, there's no telling how many kids and teachers could be impacted by this. Uh, just your initial reaction. Well, I can tell you, as a school superintendent, the last thing I want to do is close schools. Um, but at the same time, I have a responsibility to make sure that our public is informed and that we make decisions that we believe are in the best interest of our students. And that is, we want to get more information based on what we have now and what we believe we need to do to reopen schools successfully. We're going to do that in as expeditious way as possible, but we want to make it uh, a decision in an informed manner. Are you frustrated with the process? We appreciate you all very much. Appreciate you coming.